God bless you. The scripture has already been read. As you reach over and grab the hand that's beside or behind you, in front of, and let's go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, touch now each and every soul. Yes, Lord. And Lord, as you rise up, as you touch, anointing and upon, yes, Lord. let the risen spirit, which you've already done, yes. rest on us. Yes. Now breathe on us, Master, yes. that we may have a joyous and blessed time in your name. Yes. In the celebration, Father, above all celebrations around the world, yes, Lord. the resurrection yes. in us and you, uniting man and God, yes. is the most important factor. Yes. Thank you now, in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. You may be seated for a few minutes. And amen. We're blessed to, this morning to have these awesome pastors here uh, in a blessed way. And we're going to ask them for some quick remarks. Uh, and that God may, may do just what he can and will immediately after the message. Amen. amen. Uh, because what we're finding out now is that the daylight is breaking in. And as the day begins for each morning of our lives, we can look up and see as dawn comes in, it's another resurrected day. That's right. That's right. Look at somebody say, he got up. He got up. The passage that was read earlier, amen, we, we thank Pastor Figueroa for opening up the avenue. And I know some of you still have some sleep in your eye, but I guarantee you when we finish this morning, you ought to be wide awake and ready to receive him as he is. Look at somebody again and say, he has risen. Yes. And it wasn't today. That's right. It was over 2,000 years ago. Now shout it from the rooftop. He got up. He got up. Now you, you almost convinced us there. But you know, the psalmist wrote that song that the living example of a risen Savior is in you and I. Because if he get out up, you, you're not going to do the things you used to do. You're not going to walk the way you used to walk. And most of all, you don't even look the same. God has a mighty hand on each one of us that have been born again. I want to use for subject this morning, we're not going to hold you long. Breakfast is waiting, so that will keep you awake a little bit longer. Amen. Amen. When Jesus got up. Look at somebody and say, when Jesus got up. Now the word and, and the, the very intro of the word when, there's no doubt about it that he got up. And see, only a believer can bear witness that he got up. I cannot speak for somebody who don't know him as their personal savior. But I can tell you this, when he got up, when Jesus got up, there was a difference made world around. Now notice when he left here, when he died there on the cross, the Bible says the earth trembled. Yeah. Rocks broke up and above everything else, those that were in the grave got up. Y'all didn't hear that. All around, as far as you could see, when he slumped his head in the very portion of his shoulder and said, it is finished, yes. folk my, my. in the grave got up. Yes. Now, if they got up when he died, can you imagine what's going to happen oh, on that day when the cloud breaks open? The Bible says, Corinthians, Paul makes it evident that, that the dead in Christ will rise. And what we want you to understand this morning, that the important fact is that this, we've got to go back to the tomb just for a second. Yes. You don't mind, do you? All right, go ahead. Though John, Peter was running there to the, the tomb, and the scripture clearly breaks it open and about the third verse. As the intro puts in our mind, the Savior had done and defeated Satan all by himself. But the Bible says, though John's youthful legs carried him more swiftly to the grave, he got there before Peter did. He, was, he stooped and looked in. Now you got to open up your mind here a little bit. 
But he waited for Peter. Now note that he didn't want to run up in there by himself. <laughs> like many of us, we don't want to find him for ourselves. You ever seen anybody sitting in the pews and they're waiting for the Holy Ghost to come, but somehow or another they're waiting for somebody else's shout to break out? Yeah, you don't want to hear this. Early Easter morning, John's would no, I, I, I'm looking in and nothing there but I I better wait here a minute Take your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter was a little bit slower than John getting there to the grave site and we can realize that the resurrection would not have been their first thought because even though they had walked and talked with Jesus had done and seen many of the great works still it had not dawned on them that he would get up on the third day. Much like us today, we come in the place of worship Sunday after Sunday. But it's going to take that one Sunday, that one time, that one situation, that one blessing, that one anointing, that one Holy Ghost feeling, that we will realize that he got up from the grave. Can I get a witness in here? None of the possible natural explanations for the missing body could John really understand. And he said to himself, if Jesus' body had been stolen or had it been moved by religious leaders, and disciples have a reason more uh, than they were there amongst him. And they worry about that if this happened to Jesus, what would their fate be? But let us look at the close examination revealed that the linen wrappings had been left, laid out. Perhaps if Jesus had passed right through them. Are you there? Come on, open up your mind now. The cloth that had covered his head, somebody say amen. amen. Was rolled up separately from what was laying over here that he had passed through. In other words, it was sitting over here neatly rolled up. As though somebody had taken, as in Jesus, off of his head. Come on, somebody's praying out there. Yes, yes, yes. And when we find that not anybody that would steal or rob or take his body is going to be that pacific That's right. That's right. about what they do. Right. Especially if they wanted to prove him a lie saying that he would get up on the third day. The neatness and the order indicates that there was not a hasty removal but a smooth transition where Jesus' body raised up from the grave and I tell you Jesus arose and left the wrappings lying right there from whence he had put on or they had wrapped him there in the empty tomb. Now look at this, when John saw the empty tomb and, 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 and the empty grave closed, he instantly believed that Jesus must have risen. He had to have gotten up from the grave yes. to see this, but to get another eyewitness. Help me, Holy Ghost. He waited for Peter. The text here stresses the important here that John, after seeing that he wasn't there, then he believed. Come on, somebody. Amen. He had to have gotten up because he's not here. Amen. But I, I want you to hold up just for a second. Most believers would not have this opportunity, meaning you and I. We were not there to go in the tomb. But I tell you, by faith, yes. Amen. by belief, yes. by being born again, yes. by accepting Him as our personal.